Dobrý den, zdravím vás. Hello, welcome to another episode on prepositions. Today we are going to have a look at the preposition z or its variant z, which is among the most frequently used prepositions in the Czech language. Let's have a look at these examples that I wrote. Jsem z České republiky. I'm from the Czech Republic. Here we have the preposition z, if we could translate it as from. I'm from the Czech Republic. Jedeme ze Zlína. We are driving from the town of Zlín. There is a town called Zlín in the Czech Republic. So, jedeme ze Zlína. We could translate this as from as well. Pršelo v noci ze středy na čtvrtek. It rained on the night from Wednesday to Thursday. So here it's also from, but it refers to time. Okay, we can also use it for place and time. Ten stůl je z dřeva. That table is made out of wood. Z dřeva. So here we would say made out of wood. And the last one. Z lásky jí dal květinu. He gave her a flower out of love. Out of love. So as I said, we can use it for a preposition of place and time when we want to say we are directly going from something. When we speak about time, we would usually speak about the border. Like for example here, ze středy na čtvrtek. We would not say, if you wanted to say they're open from 9 till 5, you cannot say z devíti. You could not use this preposition. So when you speak about a border, or something limiting, that it's from up to. It would be this combination z, na. Or when we speak about material, something is made out of certain material, or we speak about emotions, something drove us to make a certain action and there was emotion that made us do this. Also remember, the preposition z is followed by the genitive case always. So that's a good thing. It's easy because you can never get the case wrong because it's always genitive. Jsem z České republiky. This is the genitive case. České republiky. Jedeme ze Zlína. Zlín, Zlína. Also genitive. Ze středy. Středa, středy. Stůl je ze dřeva. Dřevo, dřeva. Z lásky, láska, lásky. You can see that we used z and z. Now, I'm going to explain where we use which form. We use this form, the longer form, for a better pronunciation. We add the e there so that it connects better and there are not so many consonants. Which is funny because in Czech we always have a lot of consonants, but there is this little extra help. The following word starts with a z, ze zlína. So we use z if the following word starts with z or s, that's the first rule, just like here, ze středy. We don't say s středy. So this is for an easier pronunciation. Ze zlína, ze středy. Okay, what about ze dřeva? Here we have two consonants, ze dřeva, dř. So the second rule is when there are two and more consonants. And careful, if one of those consonants is r or l and they form a syllable, it does not count. Because r and l are actually semivowels in the Czech language. You know that we don't like vowels so much, we are very careful about using them. <laughs> and. Uh, we have R and L that work as a semivowel. So it doesn't apply when R and L are one of those letters. Remember these rules because we will see it in more examples. I would like to have a look at a couple of more phrases where we use Z or Z as in made out of or out of and we speak about material or these emotions. Z čeho je ta polévka? What is the soup? made of z čeho 
From what is the soup? Z brokolice. Of broccoli. Or literally from broccoli. Z brokolice. When you have a recipe and you say what is it made of, what ingredients you used, you would say it was z mleka. It's from milk. Z ovoce. From fruit, etc. Z radosti mě objala. She hugged me out of joy or happiness. Z radosti. Radost, radosti. Out of joy. We're speaking about an emotion. Z nudy jsem začala uklízet. I started cleaning out of boredom. Nuda is boredom. Z nudy. Out of boredom. And remember the genitive case. Co changes to čeho? Brokolice stays the same. Radost is feminine. And the genitive form is radosti. Z radosti. Nuda changes to nudy. Let's have a look at more phrases. These phrases contain z and these pronouns toho or z tebe. And these phrases are very practical. You can use them in many situations. Mám z tebe radost. This means you make me happy or you have made me happy. Literally, I have joy from you. You are the source of my happiness. So what happened, whatever you did, it made me happy. You could also say mám z toho radost, which is this made me happy. Jsem z toho smutný. This made me sad or this makes me sad. You are referring to the result, how you feel right now about something that has happened. So literally I am sad from it. Z toho. Notice how we would not say jsem z toho veselý, like I'm happy from it. So these two phrases are the opposite, but the grammar construct is quite different. Jsem z toho vedle. I am confused. I am puzzled. Z toho again, from it. I am puzzled from it. Uh, literally, vedle means next to. So I am so thrown off by something that happened that I am just surprised and this threw me off. I'm out of my place. Vedle. So this made me puzzled. I'm puzzled. To jsem z toho blázen. I'm going insane. This makes me crazy. But again, it's very similar to the previous sentence. Blazen means a crazy person. So this is just driving me mad. I am, I am so puzzled that I think I'm going mad. And another nice expression, which would be the same as this idiomatic expression. To jsem z toho jelen. Jelen is a deer. So you can say that you are puzzled as a deer. You could imagine a deer staring at the light. <laughs> To jsem z toho jelen. And if you want to comfort somebody, you can say Nic si z toho nedělej. Don't worry about this. It'll be fine. Literally, you can say Don't make anything out of this. Don't make this affect you. This is how we could also say it. But the closest translation will be Don't worry about this. And again, let's look at the forms following the preposition. Stebe from you. Again, this is genitive. Te was the original word. Toho, the nominative form was to. And toho is the genitive form. And so were all the other words. Stoho, 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 from it. So remember, when we speak about an emotion, something makes us feel a certain way, we very often use z and then the pronoun stoho. So I'm feeling a certain way from it. And now let's have a look at a little exercise so you can practice where to use z or z. Pochází mm -mm, Prahy. This means she or he comes from Prague. Would you put z or z? We look at the word and we see pr. Two consonants, but one of them is r. So remember what I told you? R is a semi-vowel. It doesn't count in Czech. So we will be content with z. Do mm -mm -mm, školy. I'm going from school. Walking from school. Šk. Okay, two consonants. Now we can put z. Do ze školy. 
and I put a couple of other phrases where we speak about emotions or material, what something is made of. So, out of love. It starts with L and there is just one consonant. So this is zlásky. Out of boredom. Just one consonant, so znudy. Radosti. Also one consonant, so this is z. Z radosti. Remember that sentence? Z radosti ho objala. She hugged him out of joy. Happiness. So if we add something else, for example, samé radosti, which means pure joy. We use this a lot. She hugged him out of pure joy. What do we put there? Again, the following word, not this one anymore. This one doesn't matter anymore. But the following letter is S. And we cannot combine S and S. So we say Z. Because this is helping us to pronounce Z samé radosti. It gives us a little break, so we don't have to say Z samé radosti. <laughs> Plastu, out of plastic. L, two consonants, but one of them is L, semivowel. So it is splastu, dřeva, d and dř, two consonants, so we put z. R and r are different sounds and different letters, of course, so r is not one of these semivowels. So we are entitled to say z dřeva. Skla, out of glass. Skl, okay, there is an L. But there are still two consonants. That's pretty hard. So we say ze skla. Kovu, metal out of metal. There's just one consonant. So we say skovu. And the last one, fruit. Something is made of fruit. There's a vowel o. That doesn't make it complicated. So we say z ovoce. Okay, perfect. Now one more thing about the pronunciation. Sometimes you can pronounce this as s. Listen to how I say this sentence. Pochází z Prahy. Did I say z? Did you hear that? No, I say z Prahy. Z Prahy. Here, this is read as s. And even these two are read together. Z Prahy. It sounds as if it was one word. And this is how we pronounce it. When the preposition is just one letter, we connect it with the following word and sometimes it can be affected by the letter that follows it. Sprahy. I'm going to give you a mini pronunciation lesson. This might help you understand. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, just uh, listen to how I pronounce it. First, let's have a look at this little chart. You see there are two types of consonants. Uh, ones are called voiceless and the other ones are called voiced. So this is what happens in any language. There are consonants that when we pronounce them, they are voiced, they are strong, that means our vocal cords vibrate, like z, z, or l, 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 or r, r. It's stronger when we pronounce them. And there are voiceless ones too. It means when we pronounce those consonants, the vocal cords are quite stable. They don't shake, so they are almost quiet. For example, p, 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 or s, s, s. And you can see there are also paired consonants. It means, for example, z has a pair of s, z, s, because we produce them in the same place of the mouth. But what changes, the only thing that changes, is the vocal cords vibrating. Z, s, z. So quiet. And another thing that happens in Czech is regressive assimilation. So how did we end up with S here? P is voiceless. You can see it here in the chart. Z is voiced. So we have Z Prahy. Z Prahy. Z Prahy. It doesn't really work. So what do we do? P, the letter that follows, says, hey, I am going to influence you. <laughs> is the influencer, okay? The, the letter that comes after is the influencer that they always influence the letters behind them or almost always. This happens in the majority of Czech words. It can happen even within words, okay? For example, the word polévka, that's why it's pronounced with f and not v, polévka. 
because the K influences the letter behind. P influences Z and Z becomes S, S because it's the pair. Sprahy. Okay, here we don't have to deal with anything because we added E, so it's automatically Z. That's the only way to pronounce it. But let's look at these. Z lásky. L, as you can see, is voiced, so it's okay. This stays as Z. Z lásky. But still, remember, we read it as one word. Z lásky. The next one, Z nudy. Also, N is voiced, so they are both okay. Z nudy. Doesn't have to influence anything because they are of the same group. Z nudy. Z radosti. Also, R is voiced. Z radosti. Z plastu. This is the same. P influences Z and it becomes S. Z plastu. Z kovu, the same thing. Pronounces S. And when we have a vowel, such as here, O, vowel usually is a little quiet, so it would be among the voiceless ones. So we say z ovoce. In some regions of the Czech Republic you could hear z, z ovoce, but the majority would pronounce it as z ovoce. Let's read these together. Repeat after me, opakujte po mně. Z Prahy. Z Prahy. Remember, one word. Ze školy. Z lásky. Z nudy, z radosti, ze samé radosti, z plastu, ze dřeva, ze skla, z kovu, z ovoce. Ok, and this is all. Now you can go and watch the video again and focus on how I pronounce the sentences. Now that you know this rule of how to pronounce Z and S. By the way, a very good lesson on practicing material and the preposition Z is in one of my episodes from Čeština na gauči and you can watch it right here. A to je všechno. Mějte se krásně. Ahoj. Krásný den. Do you enjoy my videos on YouTube? You can support my work on Buy Me a Coffee. Click on the link below the video and make a one-time donation for a price of one tea or as many teas as you wish.